Namaste everybody and welcome to our video. Thank you for pressing play. I have to just say <laughs> um, that I'm feeling very mercurial today and as it's Wednesday that's not surprising. Um, so yes, so welcome. Thank you for pressing play and we're going to entitle this video Check Yourself Before You Wreck Yourself. <laughs> After I did, I can't remember which one exactly, anyway, I did a few together, videos. I was driving along and I just keep hearing the word Sabbath, Sabbath, and I'm thinking, well, I'm looking forward to my Sabbath. I have some things to get on with, which I love, so, okay, never thought much about it. So then when I was thinking about... Uh, The next video I had to do, I asked our father, what, what video, what should I, what topic should we cover? And all I heard was Isaiah 56. So I calculated five and six was 11. And Isaiah starts with an I, which is nine. So already I thought this is important. So I came home and of course I looked it up. So here's a couple of interesting facts. Isaiah starts with an I, and it is the ninth. That's the cat. It's the ninth letter of the English alphabet. It's the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Teth, which stands for wisdom. The serpent, wisdom, and also a roof, the kind of roof that brings protection. The last letter of the word Isaiah, because when we're looking at words, here's a thing that's going to happen. <laughs> Loki, get down, get down. Loki! Oh my goodness. Get down, boy. <laughs> you cannot make it up. Where was I? Oh. When, you look, when you're working with words, all the letters are important, but just for time, we're just going to look at the first and the last. So the last letter of the word Isaiah is H. In the Hebrew, H is He, and it is the window, or one's viewpoint. Also, H is the sound of the breath of life. I found this very interesting. So let's read Isaiah 56. The cat is still roaming around this room, so if we hear a crash boom bang, that is Loki. He is called Loki because he was the runt of the litter and he's a little mischief. And I knew he was going to be a little mischief cat. And he's a little trickster. So that's why he's called Loki and true to form. Isaiah 56. Thus saith Yahweh, have a care for justice, act with integrity, for soon my salvation will come and my integrity be manifest. Blessed is the man or person who does this and the son of man who clings to it observing the Sabbath, not profaning it, and keeping his hand from every evil deed. I also read it from the King James Version. 
for all of those still Romanized. Thus said the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keeping his hand from doing any evil. I suppose the number one question is, which day is the Sabbath? Also, I checked. The Sabbath is mentioned 146 times in the King James Version. If you add 1, 4 and 6, we get 11. It's also mentioned in 24 books in the Bible. You add 2 and 4, you get 6. Now, 11 is very significant. It is a portal point, it is an access point, it is a way to go from one thing to another, it's almost like alchemy, it is a balancing. In the ancient temples of mystery, they had a, there would be a pillar on each side of the entrance, looking very much like the figure 11. The one on the right is called Jashin, and it means he shall establish. And the one on the left is called Boaz, which means in it is strength. So you can see that as we go along in the Bible, there are many, many more layers that we can explore. Okay, so getting back to which day is the Sabbath, because this seems to be a conundrum. Let's have a look at the days, first of all. Monday is the moon's day. Tuesday is Mars's day. Wednesday is Mercury's day. Today is a Wednesday. I'm feeling rather mercurial. Thursday is Jupiter's day. Friday is Venus's day. And Saturday is Saturn's day. Now Saturn is very interesting. Saturn, the keeper of time and karma, also of discipline. Interesting, the word disciple. It is the guardian of the Christ consciousness or the Christ spirit, the illuminated consciousness, the illuminated mind, the mind of Christ. Call it what you want. It is about integrity. It is purification. It is solitude. It is true faith. The kind of faith you have once all of your crutches are stripped away. It's the kind of day that you decide which master you choose. And if you choose rightly, righteously, rightly, karma, time, our father, through the eyes of the energy of time and karma, and all of these things I mentioned is observing and interacting with you. 
So, we still need to dis decide which day is the Sabbath. It said that in the beginning, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. How do we have light on this miraculous, beautiful Eden that we exist on? Well, the sun rises every day. So on the first day, the sun must have rose or shone. On the first day, the day of the sun. Every time anyone says Sunday, they're invoking the sun energy. On Monday, you're invoking the moon energy. On Tuesday, you're invoking the Mars energy. On Wednesday, Mercury energy. I know, because I'm Mercurial today. Jupiter on Thursday. Venus, ah, we love Fridays. Friday, we get the Friday feeling. Why? Why, oh, because it's the weekend. Yes, yes, yes. But also, it's uh, Venus. Mm -hmm. And on Saturday? Saturday. The Christ consciousness, the keeper of the illuminated So if the first day the sun shone, then that must be Sunday. Which brings us to the seventh day being Saturn day, Saturday the seventh. Now, it gets even more interesting. Let's take the letter S from Sabbath. I only have 20 or so minutes, so I'll do my best. That's all anyone can do, really. The letter S. The letter S is the 19th letter in the English alphabet. One and nine. One, alpha, nine, omega. You add them together, you get ten, which is basically the I with the spirit. You are connected to your spirit. S relates to the Hebrew letter Shin and it is the element of fire. Shh. It is the sound of fire. Fire is needed for alchemy, transformation. As the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, it reflects the creative trinity. Two plus one. Turn the two into one. Yes. And then you are part of the Trinity. The Father, Gary, and the Holy Spirit. Put your name there. Shin represents the Christ principle. The illuminated principle. The I am. The I am, the way, the truth, and the life. The shape of Shin suggests a choice of paths to choose, to attain the Christ mind, the illuminated mind, or to continue in the realms of the senses, depicted by the six. You know, the six is like your spine is the bendy bit, and the circle at the bottom, that's your beast nature. We all have it. The point is, we need to transcend. We need to stop perceiving from this beast nature and realize you are far, far more. By choosing the higher path, our love becomes that fire of divine love, which then expands our consciousness and our awareness. It is the way 
the truth. All rolled into an S. Who knew? So you have Saturn. You have the S and we're only doing the S. While everyone's warming a pew. On the day honouring the sun. I think we need to return. And avail ourselves of the mysteries that our Father has created for us. In fact, he insists upon it. Keeping the Sabbath is one thing you can do to help yourself. What do we do on the Sabbath? Well, we desist from serving the Pharaoh. It is an act of faith. You are putting yourself in that energy, that transformative energy of the way, the truth, and the life, that illuminated mind, that mind of Christ. What do you do on the Sabbath? Well, some of us need solitude, which is great. But mostly, we spend time doing what makes us happy and brings us joy and brings us life. We rest, whatever that means for you. It's also a time to join with your spiritual family and your relatives and enjoy eating and the simple things if the lights went out tomorrow It would be the simple things that became very, very important again. Very, very important. So, one way to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Start working. Start working with what our Father has given us to work with, to help us. It all boils down to at the end of the day. Do you want to be a beastie or do you want to be a priestie? You can decide. But rest assured. Yahweh hath said, have care for justice, act with integrity. For soon my salvation will come and my integrity be manifest. The truth is coming. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man or person, person, Edward. No one's coming to save you. That's been done. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who clings to it, observing the Sabbath, not profaning it and keeping his hand from every evil deed. If a Saturday is ruled by God, through the eyes of Saturn and the note taking. Everyone's taking notes. Rest assured, there is no place to hide. Saturday's your day. You either wreck yourself or you slide gently into divine flow. You decide. It is not God's will that any should perish. When each person awakes, everyone benefits. For the truth of Yahweh 
is being made manifest. Your choice, essentially. We have free will, yes. Everyone goes on about free will. The only reason we have free will is actually because this mechanism, what you sow, you reap, exists. So yeah, what does our free will extend to? Basically, your free will extends to, are you listening to the devils? Or are you listening to God? Are you operating from the beast mentality? Or are you operating from the mind of Christ? Okay. If you ever want to come anything near understanding the mind of God and that, wow, wow. You first have to have the mind of Christ. You have to turn the two into one. Saturday, the Sabbath, is the day that our Father is pouring that energy out on us. Come on. Get yourself off the couch. Get yourself out of the phone. Get yourself out of the shopping mall. Get yourself back to what is important. I'm starting to let you now. I'm going. I love you all. Father, bless all your children, each and every one. Namaste.